We greet you all in your shoes, precious name. There's an old adage that the old ones would say, there's no place like home. So I like being home. I don't like going away and staying away. I like home. And I like being home. Now you may have a different approach. That's all right by me. But I love being home. I'm going to teach today methodically a message and a word that is only pronounced seven times in Torah. The message shall be entitled Melchut Cha Mafea Cha. I'll tell you what that means when I began to teach. Greetings to you all in your Yeshua's mighty name. I'm going to teach from Shefa Cha, the book. The only inspired book. The only inspired stroll from above. That we may comprehend the depths and the broadness of the great writings that he placed in the heart of man to give unto us life. There's one thing about that which is alive, you know it. We that are so dead in trespass and our sins, uh, we're dead. Nothing is going to bring us alive. I'm going to teach from the parameter of one word today. It is Melchutcha, the kingdom. Mafia, the keys to the kingdom. That's the simple truth, isn't it? We're going to teach concerning the keys to the kingdom. And I'm going to take a seat. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. My prayers constantly y'all raise up the mighty, the great men. The Gabra. Men of strength and beauty. And impart in the midst of the daughters of Tizayon that Hayil. A ruach of strength and beauty and character. I don't care if you're black as tar. It means or it makes no difference. It almost began here in the love. In the heart of man. And one can see whether one is genuine, genuine or false. And that's a fact, Yisraya. And that's a fact. It's amazing that when those that have what they call celebrity status, if they walk the streets, then everybody moves back for them. We are the sons and daughters of the Melchuts, of the kingdom. And so you tell me it should not be the same for us? I would not take a double look if I had seen LeBron James. I would not even have turned in that direction. And that's the truth. Yeah. Not me. Yeah. Yet we as a nation of people that we represent the beauty of his wisdom. We have sold ourselves for what? Tell me our rewards that we have gained. By our own pronouncing of our own identity. Yeah. Nothing. Yeah. Nothing. Yeah. Nothing. Yeah. You must understand the wisdom of Yah. The keys. Yeah. To the Melchut, the kingdom. The key that opens the door. We were talking about Mephi'ah. The one that has the authority, the power, and the might. And he has the ability to podak, to thrust it open wide, to open it. Our minds must be podak. He has the power and the ability uh, to draw the sword and cut out the cancerous 
disease that is consuming our minds. We must understand the keys to the kingdom. We understand the keys to darkness because we are great practitioners. But the Torah, that seven words, that that words, key or keys, it is pronounced in the Torah, mafeya. It has significant importance. And because we don't read that like we read the word love and all that, then it has no bearing on our desire to understand what the Torah says. So we need that one that has the authority and the power, the might. The one that has been commanded by Yah to open, to potach, to herald it open, to thrust it open by force, to do it by the swords, to make sure that the door is open. We cannot understand the dynamics of that unless we began in the sheath, in the beginning. To see the prototype, the prototypical image of him that shall come. You cannot understand the depths of Torah without dissecting each and every word. Isn't that what a busybody person does? They hold fast to each component. Of the emptiness of what one says, don't they? And they're very sharp to hold on to that. But when it comes to the proclamation of Torah, we don't hold on to that, Yisrael. Now, I don't care if I don't make friends. You sure didn't have any when he went to the grave. So I'm not offended. I'm not upset. And I don't care if you don't like me. It makes no difference at all to me. I'm not offended. We must begin in the sheath or the resheath, the better sheath. In the beginning, the concept of that matter, the origin, the knowledge how it was conceived and how it was dispersed among the nation. And so I have a powerful nobi, a prophet of Yah, who began this teaching in Yeshua, Isaiah. Yeshua, Yeshua, Yeshua. But in the writings of Yeshua, in the 22nd chapter, I would have began reading at verse 22. Now we must understand this profound prophecy. That was uttered out of the mouth of this Nobi of Yah. And what it represents, the prototype of this word, which shall be revealed unto the nation. And it begins to speak unto us in Isaiah chapter 22, verse 20. He is talking about Yah removing the power of the construct of Shedna. He was a ruler. And the king, you must remove and displace the power that is ruling in our minds. So this is what this represents. This is the prototypical type of Yoshua Hamashiach. He says, it shall, that is a confirmation, not my, the possibility. It is solidified in that expression. It shall uh, Come to pass in that yam or in that day, in that specific hour, that period, uh, that moment, uh, Yah says that I will call my, he calls this one a servant, uh, an avid, an avid. He said, my servant, uh, Eliachim, now this is the type of Yoshua Hamashiach. He said, I will call my servant uh, Eliachim, uh, which the one that Yah has raised up, everything in the order of Yahshua, Yah raised them up. He raised him from the womb of Miriam. Uh, he raised them from death. Uh, Yah raised them up. So this is the prototype. I want us to follow along with me today. 
and hear what the Torah teaches us. He says, he is the one that Yah shall raise up. He is the one that Yah shall set up. He is the prototype of this nation. Who raised up the nation of Yisrael? Was it Yah? He set us up with a government that is so profound that it produced, it produced power and strength, great wealth and riches. That if we are complicit to his instructions, that we will be a mighty people. And there will be no people like us on the face of the earth. And we will produce riches in the lands of those that we are scattered. That's what Yah says. So he raised up. He raised up this prototype of Yahshua of Yeshua, Hamashiach. And then he says, I want to identify his avat. His avat is Hilchia. He is the one that he grants unto us the portion of Yah. Did not Yahshua grant unto the nation the portion that Yah had set aside? He granted unto him that, did he not? He said, he is the son of Helchiah. He is the one that has the portion of almighty Yahweh. Yahshua had that portion, had that knowledge of Yah to grant on to the nation of Yisrael. And Yah tells us how in verse 21, he says, I'm going to lavash. I will tell you. You see that if we think that clothing... It's not important. Uh, we're wrong. Yah says that I'm going to labash. I'm going to clothe him. To imply he shall be fully clothed with the sadiq, the righteousness, the power, the mind of Yah. I will clothe him, he says, with your robe. I will also clothe him with strength. And he will also have on the girdle of truth that guards his loins. He shall walk in the might of Torah. And Yah says, and I will commit, he's talking to Shabna. I will commit your mimshala, your government, your rule, your dominion uh, into his hands. And the rule of Yah is in the hands of Yahshua HaMashiach. Yeah. There is one that have uh, the mafia, the authority, the keys, uh, that the doors must be open. And without the opening of the doors, we are shut out, Yisrael. Yeah. He says, and he shall be an, an, an avat to the inhabitants of Yerushalayim. He shall be the one that nurtured them and fathered them. Bring them up in the strength and the counsel of Torah and also to bear Yehudza. He shall be the Avot. Out of him shall come the riches of your strength and his truth unto the whole nation. Not a divided nation, but to the whole nation. And this is the profound utterance here in verse 22. He says, and the key, and the mafia. He says, and the key, the instrument that opens, that product, that thrusts open, that calls it to be swung wide open, he says unto him, and the key of Beit David will I lay upon his Shechem, upon the strength of his back. He bore that stake. And the sins of the nation, he says, uh, I shall give him the key. Mafia. We must understand what that key is. And we don't know Yisrael. Because we don't allow the words that we read from Torah to speak to us. It is amazing that we as a nation can criticize everyone. We can correct everyone but ourselves. We can mock everyone and say what well, this one or that one needs to do. But we will never identify the shortfalls of our own lives. I will not be a coward of that week. When a man says something here, it is meant for me. I don't care what he talks about. I don't care what he says. 
I am guilty because I'm guilty of the smallest infraction of Torah. I'm guilty of it all. We are an arrogant, self grandizing wicked, corrupt people. We don't want to be confronted, but we can confront the issues of others. We can speak against others, but don't dare someone tell you you're wicked and you're unclean. We don't like that. You tell me you have the Ruach HaKadash. Your Ruach doesn't lead me into all truth. The Ruach is supposed to lead you into all truth. You don't see the truth of your own heart. You are a damn sick beast. You're not even worth a beast. And that's a fact. Yah says, and the key, the mafea of Dawi will I lay upon his shechem, upon his back. He shall have the strength. He shall have the maturity. Yah doesn't lay a heavy burden uh, upon our children. He knows that you are weak. He knows that you cannot bear it. He said, but that one that I shall give the key. When those men have the key of what? Of the kingdom of Dawit. That Yah can lay on his Shechem, on his back. He can lay the burdens of afflictions, of trials, uh, accusations. Uh, those that despise him, the enemies rise up against him. He is not offended. He becomes strong, he matures, he is nurtured by those experiences. He doesn't complain. He doesn't lie down. He's a strong man. You can make one strong all you want to, that doesn't mean he's strong. It doesn't mean he is strong. He's going to grant unto him the key, the key. The key of David, he's going to lay that upon his shoulder. He says, because he has that key, he says, so he shall potak. He is going to be the one that open. He is going to conquer. He's going to draw the sword. There is no weapon truly that shall be formed against that one. Shall even prosper. And they brought out every weapon against Yoshua HaMashiach. When they came to get him, they drew their swords. And we, drew the, we draw the corrupt sword of our own hearts against him. We are harsh. We are wicked. We are vile. We are insensitive. We don't give a damn about what Yoshua has purchased. We can't walk that way, Yisrael. He has purchased his nation with his death on that stake. And for you not to give a damn about that something is twisted and sick in our damn heads. There's no greater love than this. He calls us his friend. And a man will lay down his life for a friend. The reason you don't lay down your wicked ways because we have no friends. It's a terrible price, daughter. He paid the price for his nation. And for me to despise it and to do aught against it for no reason, I'm a wicked man and woe unto me. For death shall consume me. And if it shall consume me, it's going to consume you. And that's a fact. And something is twisted in our hearts when we hear, and there is no change. We should see the change. You can see the beauty of a daughter. You can see the strength of, a, of an ush. He's strong, he's vibrant. You can see the beauty of a woman. And the world has twisted the minds of the daughters. They think with some cheap frock they look fine. I don't care if I got on dirty clothes or what. I'm still the same man. My strength is not abated. Because I got on dirty clothes. I can go in the gym with this suit on. I can go in there with dirty clothes on. It doesn't change the dynamics of my strength. As a matter of fact, when I get up, I feel more and more satisfied. The world will see a strong man and a beautiful daughter. They see beautiful children. That's why they compliment them. That's why they compliment them. And so they should see the same thing in us uh, because they are the product of how we rear them 
and the environment that they live in. Not some dirty, stinking Jezebel. Hallelujah. I'm going to get to the depths of this. He said when he gives him the key, now the Mahfaya, he's going to grant unto him the authority to mind, the sure strength, the sure word of Yah. He's going to grant that unto him. And what he's going to begin to do, now this is a prophecy. He's going to begin to open. He is doing this with a physical man. He is doing this, Yisra'iah, with a physical man, Eliachim. He is producing this in that government uh, to rule over his people and to teach them. He says not only that he shall Paul talk, uh, he is going to be able to conquer. There is nothing once the key or the door is open, uh, we can conquer it. Yes. He's going to be able to conquer. He's going to take the sword of the Ruach, which is the word of Yah. We can maintain folly. And gossip and frivolity in our minds for years. We can't remember what was spoken. Even the beautiful, simple instructions or the presentation of Azok and Yeremiah before Zach, he came, Zach came to me, presented unto us. And next week we will have forgotten that because it didn't mean a damn thing to us. This is an immature generation. And we don't want to corrupt, confront our own immaturity. That's all right. I got the word here. He says that this man shall conquer. He's going to open. He's going to open. He says, and none shall shut. He says, and whatever he will shut, he's able to shut. We need the keys in Abel. We can't bind anything because we don't have the keys. We don't know how to pray for anyone because we don't have the keys. And whatever he shall, whatever he shut, he says, none shall be able to open. Now that's factual. He said, no one is going to be able to shut it. And what he opened, and what he shuts, no one is going to be able to open. We can see the prototype of El Yachim. He is a prototype, and his government is the same government of Yahshua HaMashiach. Yah denounced Shebna, because what he had allowed in the city of Yerushalayim. We need this El Chaya, this government to rule in our minds. We must denounce the hidden things of darkness. We must renounce them and abandon those things uh, that keep our minds delusional uh, and our minds darkened uh, by our own stains of corruption and sin. Uh, we can't open the door to even press beyond our emotions. I'm not looking for anyone to love me. And that's fine. That's all right by me. I'm going to die talking like this, and that's all right. I'm not going to change one thing for this wicked generation. Hear this. Well, if there is no witness, the word is only used seven times in the Torah. I must find witness. I must find the witness. In the mouth of two or three witnesses, let every word be established. It must be. I give you the witness of truth here in Matitia, Matthew 16 and 9. I want you to hear this. Matthew 16 and 19. You're sure as he spoke unto Kepha concerning the key, the keys of Dawid that was spoken in Yeshaya. Verse 22 of chapter 22. And the key of Dawid. The Yorkshire speaks of this type that he is. He says unto Kepha, in verse 19, Yorkshire says, and I will, Matthews, Matthew 16, 19. 
Yoshua says, I will give. Now, understanding that verb, he said, I will not on. I will grant it to be, I will be stored upon you. I have the power to make this promise unto you. I will give to you, uh, he says, the mafia, the authority, uh, the power, the might, the wisdom. Uh, he says, uh, of the Melkut of Hashemayan. We need to have the key to the kingdom of Yah. He said, I grant that unto you, Kepha. I not thought I'd be stored upon you. I grant it unto you. Uh, and he says, whatsoever you shall bind on the earth, uh, it shall be. I don't care what you bind, it shall be bound. He said, that shall be bound in the heavens. And whatsoever you shall loose on the earth, uh, having been loose in the heavens. Uh, isn't this not, this is not counter to what uh, Yeshua says, is it? It is the witness of the truth. It is the profound witness of this truth that we must understand. We must understand what is, uh, what is the most profound key of Yah. Uh, allow that to resonate in your mind for a moment, that we may ponder that. Do we understand what the key, or the keys of Yah are? Do we really know? Before I tell you what it is, I want to read from the book of Revelation, Yuliana. And the book was granted, it was handed into the hand, by the hand that held it. It has seven seals. Khatam. It was sealed by Yah. And when Yah seals something, you must have the key of Dawi to open it. Not every man can open it, Yisra'ya. I will prove everything I say according to Torah. Not every man can open it. And here's a profound utterance here in Revelation. Uh, chapter 5. Uh, and there is, beginning at verse 1. It says, uh, And I saw in the Yaman, or in the right hand. That's how the Jamaicans say it, don't they? Yaman. I saw in the right hand. I saw in the hand of strength in the Yaman. That's how they say it. Yaman. And even the accent of that colloquia type language of the forefathers, people don't even know what they're saying. Yaman. Y-A-W-M-A-N. Yaman. He said, I saw in the strength in the right hand of him that sat upon the key say on the throne. He said, and I saw in that hand a sefer, a stroll, a book. It was written within and also on the back side. And it was hot. It was sealed, Yisraya. It was sealed. It was sealed. It had the markings of the end. It was complete. And no one could open that seal, that hatam, unless they had the mark. You're not going to open this book, Yisrael. He said, and the book was sealed with seven seals. Those seven seals are the seven ruachim of Yah. You don't open this book because you graduated from some theological institution. You don't open the wisdom of this book because you think you're smart. You don't open this book walking in the vile nature of sin with no shame, a defiance of Torah. You don't open it. That's why we don't like opening this book. I ask you to ask yourself this question. How often you open the book? I ask you to ask yourself how often you open it. I'm not talking about a casual reading. You don't get this kind of wisdom by casually reading. A law student doesn't get that kind of knowledge uh, of law by reading. Yeah. One that's working on their doctorate, uh, the theses that they write, uh, maybe 100, 200 pages, you don't get that by casually writing. Yeah. The theses must be judged by the board of professors, uh, wise men and women as they proclaim to be. And they look for every aspect of the writing. If it's detailed, has one dissect every matter of this issue and brought light. 
to the elements of this. Do we do that? We don't do it. We lie to ourselves and say we do. But we are lawyers. We despise the book that's in his right hand. You're not going to understand this book without uh, the seven ruachim of Yah. That's why our conversations are so empty. You're talking to someone right. Did it change their lives? You talk truth, did it change them? Even if they bolt from your presence, if they bolt, you know you're talking right. I want to proceed here. He says, And I saw a strong melach, a messenger. And he had this kara, he had a voice, that when he spoke the veins of his neck, they began to expand as though they were going to explode. This one person that was sent quite a bit of money said that I don't like you raising your voice like that. It troubles me. I said, don't send another dime here. You send it to someone else. I will never allow you to tell me to raise my voice. I shall raise it. No one is going to stop me from that. He said that this milag did not speak with, a, with some kind of effeminate voice. He says with a loud voice. He spoke with a loud voice. He was a strong milag. He was not some kind of weak thing. He was strong. He was mighty. He had the hazach. He had the uza of Yah. He was strong. He was mighty. And he asked the question, who is worthy? To open to Potach. Yoshua said to Yoshua, he said to Kephah, I give you the keys to the kingdom. He says, I give you the mafia. I give you the wisdom. I give you the strength the wherewithal to Potach. To open the book. To open this book. He said, and to loose, you have the power to loose the seals thereof. And he says, and there was no man in the Hashemayim. There was no man in the earth, neither on the earth, uh, that was able to open the book, neither able to look thereon. We don't even like looking on the book, do we? It takes no priority in our daily schedule. But folly does, and sin does, and our grammatize and our gluttonous nature does. Uh, but this book never takes precedent in our activities. We have time to shuck jive and to shuck buck. But there is no time for this book to even open, to herald it open and began where you open right there. You don't have understanding of where you open the book. Uh, you can't pick up the book uh, and simply open this book. I can pick it up anywhere and began to preach. I don't care where I open it and I can preach. From there, from there makes no difference where I open this book. And there cried a certain woman. We must understand that certain woman. She had this issue in her body. As you're sure was in the midst of the throne of the crowd. There was one that pressed. Are we truly pressing? Is there a true press in our hearts to press into the kingdom? Don't you know we must press into the kingdom? She pressed upon the thongs of the crowd. Yet there was one there, his name, they, they were expecting, uh, Elisha, but he was the Hamashiach. He was the bread, he was the life. Uh, so that was a certain woman. And she was uh, the wise of the sons uh, of the prophet uh, unto Elisha. Hear this, saying, your servant, my Isha, is dead. He is dead. He has no life. There's only one that has the power of the keys of death and hell. It makes no difference where I pick it up. I can preach from it. 
She says, you knew that this was a man like Hezekiah that feared. That was the year of a great trepidation and an honor that he feared. He feared Yah. He said, listen what, how she convinced this mighty nobi. She said, you knew. You yada. You had the knowledge. You've seen his works. You've seen his beauty. You knew he feared Yah. That he was a man that loved Yah, he feared him. And the creditors has come. I have no money. We don't give a damn about Yah. And all I have is his two sons. The two that hung on the cross, on the stake by Yahshua. Both represented one the house of Yahuda, one the house of Ephraim. They were thieves and they were robbers. We, that's all that come before you is thieves and robbers. And this is what the two sons represent. They're empty. They're, they're indebted to the creditors. Uh, these are the two sons that represent uh, the nation. Yisrael, Yehuda and Ephraim. I can go on. That was from uh, 2 Kings 4. See, I don't need no notes. I don't need anything. Because this book is the jewel of my life. Yeah. This book is where my resources come from. It makes no difference when I open it. Yeah. Makes no difference. Yeah. I don't need no dictionary. Because if you labor it enough, you will know the words. Yeah. It's only about 3,200 words used in the book, and they all have the same words. There's only about 3,200 words. The, he, she, love, hate, kill, death. How about that? We're ignorant people we are. No man in the heavens of the earth, Revelation chapter 5, verse 4. In the Melach, he began to weep. You tell me the Melach weeps? And he began to weep much. Every messenger must weep today. As to the carnage of the people of Yah, their sins. He said, I began to weep much. Because there was no one that was found worthy. There was no one that was adhered. That's what worthy is. It is one that is adhered. Adhered. No one was worthy. There was no one that was great, no one walking in the majestic power of Yah. He said there was no one that was able to portal, to open the book. Not only open the book, but to read the book. We don't even read the book. I can see that one Lahak study to great depth. We don't even read the books. I'm talking to you as I'm talking to this small gathering today. We don't even read the book. There is no inspiration to even read the book. There was none. There was no man that was worthy. There was no man that was at here. There was no man of majesty and beauty and strength of any character at all. He says, uh, neither to look up this book. No one. And he says, then one of the Rishith, the old men. That's why elders must be strong and wise. They can't be clowns and full of folly and silly and immature. He says, I saw this Rishith, this old one, the elder that sat around the altar of Yah. He says to me, don't weep, my son, weep not. He says, behold... The Eri, the lion of the Shabbat of Yehuda, and the root of thy wheat, for I grant unto his government the key of thy wheat's kingdom. He says, the root of thy wheat, he says, he is the one that has gaba. He is the one that has prevailed. He is the one that is strong. He is the one that has strength. He is the one that is mighty. He has prevailed. He is the great one. For what? To Shotach. He said, the care I give you the keys. Somewhere the key has been lost. He gave him the key to the kingdom. He gave him the key to the kingdom. 
He gave that man, he gave the Shulishim, those 12 the key. What has happened? What has happened? We don't read the book. We don't love the book. He says, he is the one that has prevailed to protect, to open, to throw it over, to fight for this book. He says, and to lose the seven seas, there are the seven ruachim of Yah to loose them. There's only one. That's why he said the Kepha, as I read here, he says in Matthew 16, 90, and I will give, that's important, that verb, I will not find, I will bestow, it shall be granted, I have the power to do it. Yah is not a white giver, or a Negro giver, or an Indian giver, or a Chinese giver. He doesn't give to take back. He said, I shall give, I shall not find. I open it up for you. We're so ignorant. Our sins, we delight in our wickedness. We don't love you. We think we've got to serenade into the kingdom. I want to tell you something. Your sure cert in Revelation, he says, I'm alive and I live forevermore. He said, I was once dead, but now... You got to deal with me. I want you to hear me. He said, I want to tell you something. I have the keys to death. And I got the damn key to hell as well. And that's a fact. And we can continue to serenade ourselves uh, in this false delusion of ours. Uh, and think that we are progressing. We are not. Just like Yahushua says at 85, I'm as strong as I was when I was 40. The Torah said that Moshe lived and he died at 120 years old. He did not use his validity or the strength of his nature. At that age, he could still make babies. At 120, he could still make babies. We don't have the strength of Torah. We don't give a damn. We don't have the love of Torah. We are pretenders. Full of falsehood, he granted. He said, I give unto you the mafia of the Melchut of the kingdom of Almighty Yah. And through a short period of time, we have lost the key. You lose the key and you are in the dark, you're trying to find your way, trying to get in the car. You ever experienced that? All right, talk to me, mama. You can't get in the house. You become all unraveled, unnerved. You don't know what to do. That's why we don't know what to do. Because we've lost the key. What is the key? I want you to think of that for a moment. I know we all know the answer. Hallelujah. That's me. Y'all help me. No one was able to open. It takes a key to open the door. You can't open a door without a key, if it's locked. And you can't shut it unless you put the lock on it. I will show you the key that's lost. And how Yah is going to restore it. And the power of that key. And how it all culminates into one thing. Can I show you in the book? Not my opinion. I will show you what the Torah says. What is this key that Yah says I will give? The key of Daiweed. It's simply found. It's found in the book. If we deliberately seek out this like a jewel of treasure. I don't care how tired I get. I got up at 5 a.m. this morning. Did a few things. And then I began to search the book. I began preparing a message that I'm going to teach. It is the chetz or chet chad in. It is the two witnesses. And the millennium of Yah upon the earth. You don't teach that just by finding scripture. You got to search out the depths of the book. What is the key? 
Can I show you my young friend? Will you love me and not despise me? Can I direct your attention to one verse in the book? It's in Lucas. Luke chapter 11. He begins this in verse 52. He says, O E, a wall. Wall. You see that word wall. Anytime you see O E in the Torah, it is a word of lamentation, great cry, and great pain. He says, Woe unto you. He calls them Torah teachers or lawyers. He said, for you have gazal. That's what he says. Is this Yahshua talking here? He says, you have taken, you have taken away, you have seized. You, that's what gazal is. You have plundered, you have robbed, you have thief. He said, you have torn off. You've done it by force. You have taken away the key. Mafia. This is the key to Dawid's kingdom. He said, you have taken away the king or the key of Da'at. You have taken away the key of discernment, of understanding, of wisdom. You have taken that away. And we are a dumb, ignorant generation. Does it say that? Does it say that you have taken away? Does it say those men or those that were supposed to be uh, dear unto you? They were great men. They were mighty men. They were strong uh, in the knowledge of the Torah. The daughters were strong. They represented that their house were under the control of the dynamics of Torah knowledge. And yet their wives began to walk away and turn them away. And they turned the wives away. And their sons and their daughters, he gave that to live So you have taken, you have gazal, you have torn away, you have robbed, you have plundered. No strong man can deliver your truth without a strong woman. And this woman represents the strength is nurturing in Torah because this house is ran well. And say what you want to, when they saw my Isha, they were speaking to my strength. They were speaking of my beauty. And that's a fact. He said, you have taken away. You have plundered, you have torn away, you have robbed, you have pillaged. You have taken away what? The key. Does it say the key? Does it say the mafia? The prophecy said uh, that I will give you the key uh, to the kingdom of dry weed. Did it not say that's what Yeshaya said, did he not? He said, you that are the teachers of the Torah, you have taken away the key. You have taken away the key of Da'at. The people cannot discern. They have no understanding. There is no wisdom in them. There is no understanding of the Torah of Yah. We understand how to do wickedly, how to do wrong, how to lie, how to cheat, how to dishonor, but to do right. We don't know how to do it. Oh, I'm not finished yet. I'm not finished with us. We're going to teach this thing. I intended to teach it. I was trying to teach myself as I looked at scriptures all this week and yesterday, and this morning. I said, yeah, I want to teach in a way that is calm, but I am calm. All right. You have taken, you have gazan. You have thrown out knowledge there's a reason why they're thrown out knowledge I'll show you why how it has come about how it has come about as well we as warriors you we must always be prepared and I mean prepared thoroughly you got to prepare yourself you got to be strong you got to have the composure of your sure Hamashiach he says that you have taken away the mafia, the key of knowledge. Now listen to what he says. He says that, Kepha, I give you to the key to the kingdom. Whatsoever thing you bound, it shall be bound in the Shemayim. Whatsoever thing you lose. Now look what he says. You're taking away that key. So the door cannot be open. He said, you do not enter in yourself. You don't even know how to get in the door. He said, you cannot even enter in. He says, in them that were entering in, uh, he said, you have uh, shub. You have caused them to become uh, apostate. You have turned them. And that's the way it is with that uh, 
pharisaic spirit today. We see one that's trying to do right, we turn them away. You don't have the key of knowledge, so you speak lies and corrupt it. And you even corrupt them even the more. You're not honest with them. Well, baby, I tell you, well, well, you know, you just do the best you can. No, you do what y'all commands you. That's such a cheap cop-out. The reason people tell people that because they're wicked. And they know that if you began to be enlightened, see things discerning, you have the key of knowledge, you're going to see how wicked he is and how wicked she is. I don't give a damn if it's your daddy, your granddaddy, your, your pap-in-law, your mam in law It makes no difference. Whether it's your daughter-in-law or your son-in-law. That's a fuck. And I can't say nothing. Well, you know I can't say nothing, but you say something about him. And about him, and about him, and about him. But you can't say anything, you liar. Yeah. You must well say hallelujah. hallelujah. I am not tired, my friend. All right. I talked to him. He said, I heard you say on a couple of messages you were tired. Well, I tell you what. You got to work like I work sometimes. You will be tired. Sir. No doubt about that. He said, maybe it's a malady in your body. No, sir. I don't let nobody tell me that. Nobody. Look at what I feel like. You won't never plant that in my mind. Get who you are. I'm going to let you do that. I want bias. I don't, I don't, care. I don't care who it is. Hallelujah. So I do get tired at times. Because I work hard. When you work hard, you will get tired. You will feel that in your body. Hallelujah. I said to my friend Joseph, I tell you what, we do all these beds except four. And then we get the rest of mine. Hallelujah. Yeah. And you're eager to say, we, 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 we. I said, no, sir, I want you to rest. I'm straight. I can do it. But I will not put any man under any kind of hardship. That's just the way I am. That's the way I work. And if I will not put him under that, then don't put me under that. You work with me. You give what you got, honestly, you're equal to what I give. I may do three times more than you, but it's equal. It's amazing that men will work jobs for 100 years, and they will be faithful, and can they find something to do on jobs? But when it comes to Yah's people, his house, we can't find a damn thing to do. I haven't had that many friends in life, so I treasure friendship. I do. So when I find friends, I treasure them. Hallelujah. He said, you that say that you're teachers, you won't even allow those to enter in because you cannot enter in. And those that would go in, you prevent them. He said, you detain them, you hinder them, you shoot. You cause them to turn away and they become so apostate. Become so wicked. Become so delusional. But it's one thing about it, he always has a remedy, doesn't he? Can I show you how Yah, he said that you have taken away the key of knowledge. Did he not say key of knowledge? Key of knowledge. The power to da'at de'um, to discern, to know. The power to have judgment, to have opinion. That's all an opinion is, uh, to make judgment. And I judge because I'm spiritual. When a man is spiritual, he judge all things. It is judge of no man. The judgment of any man doesn't condemn him. I will judge. I had to get you. Got him. His judgment, he, he, he's not fearful of his judgment. Because he has scrutinized himself to that point, but he knows that uh, his desire, his heart. He knows what it is, so he can make judgment. Can I show you Yas Remini? Will you buy it? Do you all believe that? Don't raise your hand, but how many of you all believe that? Can I hear a consensus? I close my eyes. Uh, hallelujah. All right, so you all believe that. So if that's the truth, can I show you the remedy of how it's resolved? Will you believe that? Well, I will show you. He said you have taken away. Did he not say that? You have gazal, you have robbed, you have taken away the key. The key of da'at. The people cannot discern. They have no understanding. Does Yah have, is there a remedy for Yah? Sure it is. It's in the book. Hallelujah. Can I show you what the remedy is? Yeah. I will show you the remedy right here. 
is found in one place, Yeremia. Can I ask you all something? Have you ever gone to a place, and, and to you there are all kinds of treasures in the place. You grab that and you hold that, you grab that and you hope nobody gets, uh, you, you say, I, I don't want nobody to get that and you just grab everything you can see. Oh, I've done that. And then you par down to sit maybe one or two things and you go into a place that everything is just, oh, this. I used to buy books all the time. I, I love books. Books. I love reading. The fun thing for me, Raphael didn't like it. I'm going to the bookstore. Oh, Friday morning, let's go to, let, let's go to TJ Mack. No, 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 no. I tell you what, you drop me off and you go to TJ Mack and I'm going to stay here. You come back in two hours. I go to the bookstore, Barnes and Nobles, and just read. Not magazines, books, nonfiction. This is Yah's remedy for us. Yeremiah, you all concur that you believe. Yeah. Jeremiah chapter 3, verse 15. Did not he say, I will give unto you the keys of the kingdom of Yah? This, isn't that what Yahshua says? I give unto you the key to the kingdom. Did he say that, the keys of the kingdom? Then look what he says here, the same I give. Yet Jeremiah chapter 3, 15. I will not find, I will give you re'ah. I will give you messengers, Yah says, according uh, to my lamb. He said, which they shall feed you with what? They shall feed you with what? Come on, they shall feed you with what? He said to the lawyers and the scribes, the Pharisaic order, he said, you have taken, you have gazelle, uh, you have taken the key of knowledge. Uh, did he not say that? Uh, that's what they said. We don't want no Ra'ah to lead us to the Ra'ah, to the pastors uh, where we can feed. Uh, he said, they will, they're going to come out of my heart. That's what he said. That's what he said. For those that teach Torah, they have robbed the mafia or the key uh, to knowledge of Torah. So the people can't discern. That's the ability to discern. That is one of the profound keys of, to the kingdom. That is one of the profound keys to the kingdom. The key of knowledge. I will show you all of them, don't worry. That we had knowledge of Yah. In the midst of all of his great battle, he had wisdom to use the Torah. He could discern what was of Yah and what was not. He said, I will give unto you re'ah, ra'ah, after my own heart. He says, and he used the word here, and they shall feed you. They shall ra'ah. They shall lead you to the pastors. They shall feed you with deam, with the knowledge of Yah, with the wisdom of Yah, with the fear of Yah. That's what they feed you with. We don't love the book and treasure it. We got every kind of book but this book. I don't have books like I used to. I would have amassed a library of probably five, ten thousand books. Would not even have a place to put them all. Because I love reading. And I would try to read a book a week. Small books, I could zim through them. I can't even read like I used to. I would take books to work and read them on my lunch break. I didn't gather in the dining facilities. I wasn't gathering in the places uh, to laugh and act like a jackass. Uh, you couldn't find me there. No, sir. No, more. And the vast majority of the time, I would take my own lunch. He said, and I will give you, I will not on ra'a. Pastors, after my heart, these men did not, they've taken away the key, the key, the key, the key, the mafia, the key, the authority, the wisdom, the discernment of the kingdom of Yah. They're not going in and they don't want you to go in. A true friend would always recognize your defaults and your sins and your failures. Not to condemn you, but to show you. Come on, beautiful daughter. Come on, son. You always do that. I will give you ra'ah according to my heart, which shall feed you with knowledge 
And then they're going to feed you with understanding. They're going to feed you with the being, the wisdom to become skillful in using the very knowledge of Torah. You become skillful. You become a skillful warrior. You become very skilled. We're not very skilled, Yisraya. We're not skilled workers. We're not working out of the skills of the mitzvah of Yah. That's why our lives are right. We can't teach love to no one because we don't have love. You can't show kindness to no one because you're not kind. Women today don't know how to be kind to men because they haven't been taught to be kind. Men don't know how to love women because they haven't been taught to love. When the world sees something that is genuine. This one man said to me, he looks at my wife and he says, history. So I asked my Rafi, I said, all right, my friend, take care. I said to her, do you understand what he said? She said, no. But I do. I've been around. I can hear what people say. I said, when he said the word history, he is saying, this is so beautiful. It is so infrequent. You find people like this. He said, that's history. That's going down in the journals of time. He said, history. That's all he said. Was that all he said? That's all he said, history. History. I hear people. Well, you don't listen to nobody. I don't hear your folly. No, I don't hear that. He said, history. Beautiful. History. That this is, you've already made history. Two or three years and they don't even love each other. She's ready to leave him. For what? She leaves him. I tell you all this with all honesty. Never has there been any circumstance in my marriage all these years that I want to leave my wife. Never, not one time. Nothing. I'm never going out of the house. So I got to get away from her. No! Going nowhere. You can act nutty. That's just open. No, 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 no. I'm, go I'm not going nowhere. I'm not going to take a walk and cool down. No, I'm not going to prayer. Nothing. You all must well love me. There's nothing she's ever, ever said to me that, make, that said, I want to leave you. Never. He left, I slammed the door. No, I'm not going to do that. This is my home. I'm going to sit down. You chill out for a moment. I'll get back with you. Don't worry. I got you. Yeah, don't worry about a thing. When Big Daddy comes, he's coming. And he doesn't play. He cuts head off and rip guts out. Pull the eyeballs out. And just let the tears fall. And then he makes up. I didn't hear you, mama. Say it so I could hear you. All right, uh, beautiful. This juvenile crowd here, you know, come on now. What do you all think you're dealing with, a boy? I'm a man. I'm a man. Send my precious ach a wife. Ach, she's a beautiful daughter that loves John. Strong. He needs that. You know, the Amish raise up women among their own kind. Hell, we don't even have the, we're so callous, we won't even try to raise that one. You're a callous thing, woman. I don't take one damn word back. I intend to stroke you in the heart with a knife. You're cold and you're callous. You don't give a damn. How about that? I don't take it back. In the days a woman that thought she was pretty, she would make sure her friend was pretty. Sure she did. Girl, I didn't put that in the cleaners, but I got some of this. Hold it back. Didn't have that kind of fresh stuff you spray on clothing. Make it fresh a little bit. I got me two bottles over there. I wear this suit four or five times before I clean it. Oh, I don't stink. No. 
My body doesn't stink. And I put it back in. About that foot. Ch -ch -ch. And you smell it. Ah, she can go again. So back in the days where the woman was overweight, where the woman was not attractive, they would make her look attractive. They would. Come on, girl. Mama, you, was that in your days too? Oh. Old woman like you? Stop it. They're going to make an impression, aren't they? Talk to me, mama. That's right. We got plenty for you to eat. Don't worry. Catch any fish this week? Go down there, go down there and get one like that. See, I got, I got a little old cheap watch that shows me the best days of fish. I bought me one. I spent $30 for it. Haven't used it one time. Other day was a nice day to fish. When you got four fish on, that's the time to fish. They work? They do. They work. <laughs> so the women would make the women beautiful. And then because what made the woman beautiful, not because she put makeup on her. Can I tell you what? It was the care for those that embraced her. Say I'm right. I wasn't born yesterday, was I? I know what I'm saying. Say to my wife, you're a beautiful daughter. They love children. And tell them, baby, I had to spank her. Sit down, sit down, Abner. Mm -hmm. Train them up and help you. Yeah, I say it. I don't care what anyone says. Yeah. Come on down here. I got a sword, all right? I don't mind using it. Yeah. Be surprised, folks, listening to this today. Some of my most ardent enemies. But they can't fight against it. You know why? Because they know it's the truth. They know it's the truth. They know it's the truth. I'm going to proceed. I want to show something. So Yas shows us what has happened. He gives us the remedy of what he's going to do. And they're going to feed us. They're going to ra'a us with knowledge. Deum. With the knowledge of Yah. That's what a true messenger feed us with. With the knowledge of almighty Yah. Well, my son can do it. Your son can't do it. Can I show you the process? The only way this is going to come. Can I? This is our remedy. But we must have qualified men. We must have qualified men. There's only one answer to that. And it can, it can be found here in Isaiah Yeshaya. Chapter 28. I'm going to finish this today. Isaiah 28, quickly, verse 9. This is what it's going to take, Yisraya, to open up to Potak, to have the key, these kinds of men, to the knowledge of the day um, the da'ats of Yah. Isaiah 28, 9. He says, Who shall teach? Does it say knowledge? Isaiah 28 verse 9, who shall lamad, who shall instruct in the council of Dehum, in the council of knowledge? Who? And who shall teach us understanding, uh, uh, understanding of Shemua or doctrine? Who's gonna you understand what Shemua is, the doctrine is? Uh, who's gonna teach us revelation of Torah? Who's going to teach us to reveal uh, or the words gala to uncover? The mysteries of Torah. Who's going to teach us that? For certainly, it's not going to be the ones that are weaned for milk. It's not going to be the family ones. It's not going to be the mama boys. It's not going to be that. It says them that are weaned from milk. And those that draw and that draw from the breast. You need men that can give us meat to eat. It's not going to take a boy that's still drawn from the breast of his mama. He's a mama's boy. But mama says, uh, mama has trained him to be a weak fledgling. Uh, daddy says, I'm going to wait. don't worry about what daddy did. Don't worry about it. I love you. He becomes a weak fledgling of a thing. Uh, they don't realize how they're messed up, young man. And coddle him in his weak nature. I don't care if daddy doesn't know you It's one thing about the strength of a man. Uh, he has the ability uh, to teach manhood. And a woman doesn't have that. You find weak boys that like to draw to mama. 
Not a street he won't dirty. Give me data. And tell your CPS boys and tell them you rush. It's rush. Harush. And I say, look at the girl. Do your hand like that. And he, cozy. He, he'll look at them and say, don't forget, I'm the man. I said, to tell them. And, oh, they laugh at him. Let me see, they smile at him. I say, do this. Of course, he can't hit like me. I'm the man. I say, you got to say it like that. I'm the man. Of course, he doesn't get louder than me. I'm the man. Of course, they make sure he, he got his meal on the table. And, and when he start crying, they, they cuddle him. Let them know. And of course, they laugh at him. <laughs> One day, he goes, I'm the man. Uh-uh. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Get away from that fool. And this is how this effeminate nature has robbed a man today. Mama put this in the child's head, the son's hand. And show how wrong daddy is, but she can never show how wrong she is. That's wicked. That's wicked! And they become promoters of mama instead of daddy. They're going to produce the same kind of genetic construct. Oh, y'all don't have to love me. I don't yeah. give a damn. Yeah. We got to get real. The nation must become strong. Yeah. Yeah. Be surprised the women have done that to their sons. Thinking it was excellent, but it wasn't right. Yeah. She didn't have the key of that knowledge. A man, I don't care how ignorant he is. Uh, he got a knowledge about him. Uh, it is innate in the man. Yeah. I don't care whether he knows you or not. Woman goes out there, the car won't crank, not start, it won't crank. He'll go out there and say, hold up, oh, hold up, baby. Whoa, 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 whoa. Even that innate man character make him reason within the construct of what he's looking at. He said, hold on, hold up. Is that all right now? Brab, oh, baby, woo! <laughs> We disdain our men. You're a sick creature from hell. Damn you. Send this man away for a wise woman that loves yeah, loves children and strong and beautiful. When she walked, men will look at her and admire her and turn their head because of her beauty. That's a woman. Because you got some tight on your arse and thinking you're fine. You're not fine. That's not the beauty of a woman. This is what the world has taught you. What is the, the whore? Jenny Kardashian? Jenny whatever. What's her name? Well, them Kardashian whores. <laughs> silicone whores. They're silicone whores. No, no, no. They're not whores. I'm sorry. Forgive me. They're hoes. They are ho. Now put this... I heard from a sister in in UK. She said, Riyak is sad that you know how they will try to block you and block this kind of teaching. But it is right. This is what we need. I hear from a sister down in Sydney, Australia. She says, oh my, I found this. And what a great blessing. Do you have a place in Sydney, Australia? I said, well, you can join us with Shabbat. It'll be Saturday, uh, Sunday evening. You might as well join us. I just... Take that message from the Shabbat and play it on the Shabbat in your house. He gave Kepha the keys, or the key to the kingdom. That word is synonymous in what I'm really given. No fun. I will give you the key to the kingdom of David. It's synonymous. Two words I'm dealing with now. I don't know how many times the word give is written in the Torah. But I know the word key, keys is only seven times. Hallelujah. Hear this, Yisraya. Hallelujah. Again, he says in Yesha 28.9, Who shall teach knowledge? Who shall lamad? Who shall give you the counsel of the skillfulness of knowledge? Who shall do that? Well, it certainly can't be a boy that's drawn from mama's titty nipple. Her shad, it can't be someone like that. He must be a strong man. And when he makes a statement, his statement represents his character. When he stands up in the midst of the wicked, they will know uh, who he is. Uh, that's a man's man. We need that. What's wrong with that? 
We need the man's man. We need strong men. We need beautiful men. And the daughters of Tizan understand the beauty of a man. She submits, subject herself unto that. She'll raise strong young children. Her sons will be stronger. Her daughters will be strong. They'll be beautiful. Yeah. That's a fact. How do I know that? Because although our four parents didn't know Yah, they knew how to raise. And the neighbors did too. And they will put a rod on your squat squat. Yeah. And go tell your mama I'd slap the fire out of him. Yeah. What do you do, baby? Thank you. These degenerate Jezebels today, I popped him on his butt. I'll tell you what, I'll kick him. I, I'm going to come in there and I'm going to... Got on blonde weaved hair. Talk to me. You, you call that beautiful? It's sad. Can I proceed a little further? This is Yah's process. Hallelujah. It takes the key of knowledge to open everything. We need men to teach us knowledge. And those that are weaned from the nipple can't teach us knowledge. Those that hold fast to their traditions can't teach us knowledge. They cannot teach us the da after the um of Yah. It's all about mama. He's a mama's boy. He's a mama's boy. He's a boy. He's a boy. He's not a man. Hallelujah. Now I want to direct our attention to one verse here. In Lucas 24, verse 45. Now, Yahshua said the Khefa will open up. I will give you the keys to the kingdom of Hashemam. And the key is meant to partak, to open up. That's what the mafia is. I want you to hear this here in Lucas 24, 45. This was after he had resurrected from the death. He said, I will give you re'ach, a pastor, so those I will lead you, and they shall feed you with knowledge and understanding, with being or being or. He said that. He also said that in Yeshai, who's, who, will, who shall lamad, who shall teach knowledge? Those that are weaned from milk and they're that are drawn from the breath. They don't need the breast anymore. They don't need breast milk. They need strong meat and they're strong men. There's nothing wrong with having strong men. A strong man understands his beauty and his strength. He doesn't over, he doesn't overextend himself. And that's a fact. Treat the folks wrong, that's a lie. You treat the folks wrong. I shall, my friend. It says in Lucas 24, 45, it says then, and this who opens Yahshua, that's why we need the key of that way. It says he popped up. They didn't even know who Yahshua was. They're sitting there eating and doing their thing. It says, then he partook. He opened their understanding. He will feed you with knowledge and understanding. He opened up their ability to discern, to have insight, to have knowledge, to have understanding of the wisdom of Yah that they become skillful. That's what knowledge will do. They didn't even have the knowledge of whom he was. They have the testimony, but it was not a knowledge. Yeah. Then he said, oh, my, my, my. Then he opened. He flung over the, opened the door for them. Then he pulled up. He opened up the understanding. For what reason? Why? That they may understand. That they may be, they may be know. They may have insight to what is written in the Keats V. Keats, Keats V in scripture. That scripture may be open up to them. That they may understand the prophet, the prophecy of Yeshua. And I shall give unto you the keys to the kingdom of Dawi. Yeah. Then he opened that up. Yeah. Then he opened it up. He put up. He opened up their understanding. Their be all. Their be. The power to discern what is. With understanding what is the hukma, 
the hukmah, the skill for preparation, this wisdom prepare us. That's what knowledge does. Knowledge prepares us to use wisdom and to have understanding. That's what knowledge is. That's what da'at is. You understand the process in the, in the intricates of that. You understand how to process the wisdom of Yah. You, can I show an example? And I started to say something. I went up Thursday. Rick has been very kind to us over these many, many years. So I had Akhiya been to call him. He said, well, just 50, 75 watermelons. I said, okay. So when I went there, I, I took him those melons. He says, how much are all? I said, nothing. He said, I write the check. I said, no, sir. He had someone in his office. And I said that purpose. I said, you've been kind to us over these years. You owe me nothing, man. Well, I'll give you a trade-off. I said, no, sir. You give me nothing. Just like that. And I walked out of his office. You don't understand the impact that makes. We don't understand that. I showed us another example. I'll get back to that. Oximion and I went out yesterday to get the mulch for the raised beds. We looked at the bins, the nice bins. So Simeon and I, we are talking, I say, offer him that. The people know Oximion. So he walks in there, he's meandering in his long body, he's moving, I'm driving the truck. So he goes in there, he comes back and tells me, he said, you know what? The old time it was in there. Which one? He said, you know the one that brings, that when the trucks would break down, that owned the record, he would pull the trucks for us? So when he saw me, he says, he began to talk to the owner of the business and those that worked there. He said, you ought to see those people down there. He says, so clean and so organized and so neat. See, Simeon had a witness with the man because Simeon gets excellent prices. We bought seven yards of that mulch for what he charged us. Come on, man. So the man has, he, he embraced oh, Simeon. I don't go and I let him do it. Why? I let him use his gift. When he began to talk about this community, he said, the man said, oh yeah, I'll take that. Because I'm hearing what, he, I'm hearing what this man said about you all. I know you are shown up genuine now. I know you're real. He said, I'll take that. Oh, I could take what he sold us that for and make, make a little money. I know what one of those bins said for. They said for $35 and 50 in most places. So don't talk to me. I know what I'm saying. Fact. And what he gave us for that? Well, I can sell those nice ones and probably make. Not probably. I can make what we spent. I say, tell him we'll come get it on Tuesday. We don't have the money, but we'll get it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And that's a fact. That's a fact. We need strong men. It's the witness of our integrity, what we speak. You go, people see that. That's what I say to all husbands and wives, you, we have to strengthen ourselves. I don't care who you are. Beautify yourself. First of all, daughters with meekness. Become gentle. Don't be so damn mean. Keep quiet, huh? Hear the Torah. He opened up their understanding. He potak. He had the key. We lock that gate at night, don't we? That's, a, that's an iron gate up there. Not like them little ones we had on that, that little, that's heavy duty stuff there. In order for those gates to hold up right there, I, I put about 10 bags of concrete in each hole. Well, I could have done it with two, but no, it, it would it, it, it it have, you couldn't have closed it two or three times. So I had the bigger dig hole, big old hole. I couldn't be in a, had the bigger dig old, big hole. And jammed that concrete in there. I put every bag in every hole because I wanted to get it right. I wanted to get it right. I put every bag in there. I know who helped me. But I knew their hearts, their heart wasn't right to get it right. I put every bag in there. 
That fence across the road, son, you were out. I put every bag of concrete in those holes. That's why still today. I said to his son, just drive the skid loader. I go get the bag, I take it down, and I put it in the hole. He wouldn't have done it the way I did that. As a fuck. He would not have cared the way I cared. I put every bag in there. And that across the road over there, I put every bag in every hole. I made him drive 10 stakes because he wants to show me he was tough. And I made him drive 10. I knew he would be wore out. That's why but I didn't help him. I said, <laughs> <clears throat> that postal driver is a bad boy, isn't it? Doesn't take long. You find out what kind of shape you're in. Why did you do it? I drove all of them except a few. We, you help me. And all those rests, I drove them all. How? Well, I just, I just drive them. And then I walked. See, I didn't. And he just pulled up with the tractor. And I walked between each one. I recoup. And I drive another one. I walk. Drive another one. I walk. Drive another one. It didn't take me a month to do that. A couple of days. And I pulled that wire. Yes, sir, I had them to go down the hill for me. Come on, young bloods. I knew they were strong. I did all the rest. He helped me tie it in. That's love. That's the nature of a strong man. Hallelujah. The keys. We got the gate out there, as I mentioned, right? I want you to hear what Daewid said. I'm not going to even tell you where it's at. I want to read it. This is what Daewid says in Tehillim. I give you the chapter. 118. He says unto Yah, I give you the verse 2. Tehillim 118 and 19. This is what Yah, of all of his tries, he asked Yah to do this. He says, Shotak, open to me the gates of Sadiq of righteousness that's what i want above all things yeah that's what the keys will do it will open up the gates of righteousness you will do right you will walk righteously open up the gates of sadiq he says and i will go in i will bow i will enter into them he says and i will know i'm in because i will praise you yeah i will lift of my voice, I will lift up my hands and my heart unto you. You will know you're in the gates of Sadiq. He said, I will praise you, Yah. You open up your righteous Torah, your righteous wisdom, your righteous knowledge. I will praise you. Can I say this? I want you to hear me. I don't want to hear the praises. We are so corrupt in our hearts uh, and so wicked. We are so, uh, we are so condemned. Our own damn hearts uh, condemn us. Y'all's going to damn you into hell. Uh. We can't, we don't know how to respond to y'all. Because you're evil and wicked. You don't want to respond. Because you're evil and you're wicked. Don't forget he got the key to death and hell now. Open up the gates. This is what Yah is doing this morning. He is throwing open the gates of Sadiq. He's letting us know the element of corruption that's in our minds. So he's opened up the gate of wisdom. Open up the gate of understanding and knowledge. He's opened up the gate of the Ruach HaKodesh. Why? Because it's one thing when the Ruach comes in. It comes in and reprove. It judges us of our sins. You can't do it wickedly and say you have the Ruach. You can be mean as a damn pit viper and say you, you have the Ruach. Can I say this? I would have finished you. No, don't worry. I would be a corrupt man to be mean to my issue. I can't do it. When I say a thing is done, it's settled, let's finish. I'm not going to abuse her with language. I'm not going to talk to her any kind of way. But I am the man. I am the man. Don't back talk me. Just be quiet. You get the rewards when you do that. Don't try to challenge my voice. Don't talk loud to me. Don't do that. 
Don't do that, woman. You can do anything but that. Don't do that. You do that, you're in trouble. It is the quad of the sweet acid that turns away wrath, isn't it? So you just be quiet, you turn away. The women that would say anything to their husband, talk to them any kind of way, and they don't care. They don't care what they say. I'm not going to let her do that to me. Because I am the one that you're shah. I'm the one that makes sure my house walks in the order of young. It's through the power that he has. Your shoe is my head. I'm her head. Your shoe is my head. And I'm her head. I am the your shah of my house. So I must lead it and guard it right. My house must stay in order. There was a group of Jezebels that once lived here, and they would say, that woman, she just messed that man up. Well, they didn't even have a man. They know what a man was. I ain't got to worry about her. No, no, I ain't. I'm not worrying about her messing me up. I don't even respond to folly like that. Can I proceed here, Yisrael? You that are listening, may Yah's riches rest upon you. Hallelujah. So open up the gates. Yah has opened up the gate of wisdom today. That's the righteous gate. He has opened up the floodgates. Hallelujah. He has Yisra'ya. Hallelujah. He has. So do we ask the question, how do I get the gates open or the key if i read it will you believe me i want to show a perfect example right here in the tasneeth the pattern hoshia hosea chapter 2 verse 14 quickly <clears throat> this is the promise of yah or his daba dabarim the promise is his word he says in hoshia chapter 2 verse 14 yah says therefore he says, what I'm going to do is allure her. I'm going to draw her. Isn't that what a man, what a man does? His, his Ishar draws her to his bosom. Or woman, she draws the man. She doesn't draw him by her being cruddy and wicked. He doesn't draw her by being a nasty man. You draw by kindness and comfort, don't you? He says that I'm going to bring her into the wilderness. He said, I'm going to speak comfortably. I'm going to speak sweet to her. I'm going to say sweet things in her ears. I'm going to tell her that. I'm going to speak the excellent news of this restoration of Yah. He said to her, verse 15, he says, look what he's going to give her now. He says, I'm, go I'm going to give her a vineyard. I'm going to give her a vineyard or a kerem. That's what he's going to give us. He said, this woman, I, I'm going to draw her. He says, I'm going to give her a kerem. He says, I'm going to give her a place, a vineyard, where I have cultivated. He has cultivated our minds through the knowledge or through the key that brings us into his presence. we got to open this door to come into Yah's presence. He says, I'm going to cultivate a kerem or a vineyard for her. He says, and from there, he says, and this, now look at what he says in Hoshea, chapter 215. He says that from there, and the valley of uh, Achor, the place where we find trouble and distress uh, and agony and tribulation. We all know that valley of Achor, don't we? He says, and from now, the valley of Achor, through great trial and tribulation. He says, for a door. You all see that? He says, for a fatak, a door. It shall, a door of what? Tikva. A door of promise, a door of expectation. That's the key. See, when we began to understand and assess and di dissect this great knowledge, it caused the door of tikva to be open. Not hope, because there is no expectation. But in the tikva, the tikva, the earnest expectation, knowing that it shall come to pass. He says the door of tikva shall be there. That door shall be in the midst of achor, in the midst of all of your tribulations and trial, there will be a door there for you. And in order to open the door, it takes a key, Yisra'ya. He says of Tigva, and she shall sing. 
We shall offer up the Shuram, the great songs unto ya. She shall sing there. As in the days of her youth, we see our babies, they love to sing, don't they? They get up here without any shame, and they will sing. We're stubborn and stiff-necked, and we don't sing. And as in that day when she come out of the ladder, Mizraim, you come out of the bondage of your mind. You love the flesh pots. You love to eat. You love to, you love to be a grammatizer. You love to be a glutton. And when you come out, that's what Egypt is. That's what we love to eat. I was reading yesterday. I showed my issue. I said, look at this. They said that the ice cream cone, I mean the ice cream sandwiches from Walmart, they don't even melt. And a mother of the diaspora she had, a, an ice cream sandwich out in the sun for all day, like 90 degrees, it did not melt. And she asked the question, what am I feeding my children? So the news reporter, they did the same thing. And they said, I'm telling you, the ice cream didn't melt. It doesn't melt. The chemicals, they got to we feed our babies that. Your mamas make ice cream. Get off your lazy dumps and make ice cream for your babies. So what they did, they did it again. They see if it worked. They said, no, it didn't melt. It did not melt now. So what they did, they purchased some haagen and they and those Klondike bars. They did melt. The haagen which is made of cream and sugar, that melt. But that other stuff, I don't eat stuff like that. You can. I don't eat stuff like that. I'm glad. I don't have no craving for stuff like that. You drink your Kool-Aid and all that. It's going to kill you. What well, we die? Well, he lived at his age. He lived three scores and ten. Plus. He lived it out. And mama's live beyond that. That's right. I saw that. I said, what a, what a shame. This wicked generation. That we, we become such gluttonous and people that we, we, we don't care what we put in our mind. I care what I put in me. I want to live. I'm living. I, I know I need to be around a while. I'm living to live. I'm not do, I'm not, I love me too much for that. I love me too much to do me like that. And I do love me. I love me a whole lot. I'm not going to do You can. You can. I'm a grown man now, so I don't need Snicker candy bars. I'll eat one every now and then. Oh, don't write me and say you don't eat Snickers. Uh, sometimes I have a taste for one. And I'll eat one. Maybe six months or a year, I have one. Maybe two. Talk to me. Stop it. Hear this. And it shall be in that day, says Yah, that you shall be that that you shall call me Ush. You're gonna call me your man. You're gonna call me. That's what I, that when you call your man Ush, he opens the door. When he opens her mind to understand what an Ush is, she says, "You're my champion. You're my great man." He said, "You won't call. You're gonna call me Ish." <clears throat> And you shall call me no more Bali. Bali. You shall not call me Lord anymore. And I will take away the name of Balaam out of your mouth, and you and they shall be no more remembered in your name. Why is he going to do that? Because Yah says there's going to be a door there. It's going to be the door of Tigvah. And when you open that door through the knowledge of Torah, you're going to see that everything that I promise is there. Everything that I have spoken, it shall be fulfilled. We need to understand that, Yisrael. That's why we need men that are strong. We need to baruch, Yahweh. That's why he says that the zakain that rules, well, he's worth of double honor. Yah gives us a man that is sincere. He's devoted to what he is doing. You should love him. You should be kind to him. I must say, my friend, I've upset your wife over the years, but I've told the truth. She's still always been kind to me. She has. Even when she didn't want to greet me, she still did. I'm going to greet this man. I may not understand. But as old folks say, pa and ba, oh, when we overcome, oh, we'll understand all oh, the Torah, oh, he may be young and he is unlearned. Help him, yeah, help him, yeah, to understand. Hallelujah. Oh, I know, 
I don't understand everything, but I believe he is a true servant of Yah. I will listen with my O's and to hear what Yah is saying, and I'll just go home by by. And bye, I like that. Oh, my, my, my. Oh, when we, oh, I got you, mama. See, you think I'm, but I'm not going to do that. You know I'm not going to do it. You can forget that. I've seen that 50 times, all different. And I know I can't sing. I know that. But I love to sing. We got to get our Zachin Shimri up here. We got to get that thing working for him. Can't wait to get it. He's going to sing for I know he can sing. I've heard him sing. He got something down there. Son. <clears throat> He's an excellent basketball player. Boy. <clears throat> Come to singing. Don't tell him I said it now. He may not can hear me. He, he, he didn't get that. He, he, he didn't take that talent from your daddy. Nah. He, he's a baller, but he's no singer. You hear me out? Okay, beautiful. All right. Hallelujah. Open up the gates of Sadiqia. I want to kind of wind this down. I want to show us something why it's so important to have that key of knowledge. One of the most powerful things we have and how it is developed in us. And the only one could speak to that great knowledge of that. Not the only one, but the one that spoke with great clarity. His name is Shirak. Shirak. And this is what he says in Shirak 19 and 19. I want to carefully read this. This is what Shirak says. He says in Shirak 1919, the power, that's why Yahshua says, I will give you the key to the kingdom. The key of knowledge is what the Pharisees have, Gazal, they have with him. But this is what the prophet says here. He says that the knowledge or the da'at, the power to discern and understand, the wisdom as it is applied and the operation of this powerful wisdom. <clears throat> he says this, listen now, the knowledge of the mitzvah, mitzvah, of the commandments of Yah, he said that is the lecha, that is the doctrine, that is the discernment, that is the revelation, that is the insight uh, of life. You hear that? That's what produced life. When we love Yahweh with all, love our neighbor as ourselves. How can she love Yah and stay mad at me for days? Or the same thing with me? You are wicked Jezebel, Raphael. I'm a dog. I'm not even human. I don't care who I rip your wicked heart out. It makes me no different. The key of knowledge to the kingdom. The knowledge of the mitzvah of Yah is the doctrine. It is the lecha of life. And they that do things that please Yah, they will receive the fruit of the tree of immortality. That's what the scripture says, Yisrael. It says that they shall receive of the fruit of the tree. You all see that? It is Ezra Kha of the tree. I want you all to remember that. I want to show us something. I want to show us something. Hallelujah. Because it says this in Revelation chapter 2 verse 7. As Yah was talking to Ephesus or the gathering of Ephesia. He says, he that hath an ear, let him hear what the Ruach says unto the congregation. To him that overcome will I give to eat of the tree of life which is in the midst of the paradise of Yah, which is in the centrality of the midst of the great wisdom and the knowledge uh, and the great uh, power of our Abba. I want you all to remember that the tree now, 
Because it's important to remember that. Shirat goes on to say in verse 20, he says that the yare of the fear of Yah is all hukma. When one has this great honor for Yah and fear of his commands, his mitzvah, what he commands us to do. When a man fears Yah and obey what he commands him to do concerning his house. And the same thing with the woman. You know that that's the fear of Yah. He says the fear of Yah is all. That is the great key of all hukma to become skillful. It is, uh, it is all wisdom. Uh, and in all wisdom, uh, do you hear this now? In all wisdom. You must have all wisdom to perform the Torah. In all wisdom. This is how you perform the Torah. To perform the Torah. And then he says this. He says that the knowledge of his omnipotence or his omnipresence or his power. He says, and the knowledge of the great presence of our Abba. If a servant say to his master, this is what we say. And this is what we say to each other. Hear this now. I am your servant, am I not? Are we not to serve each other? He that is great among you, let him become the servant. You're not great because you don't know how to serve. Look what he says. If a servant says to his master, I will not do as it please you. Okay, you say, I don't want to do it. Just like we as young as told our parents, I, I don't belong to it. He says, though afterwards he does it, he says, he angers him that nourish him. Although Yah says, obey my commands, and we say in our hearts, I don't want to do that. And yet we do it, yet he nourish us. It angers Yah. It makes him angry. And we think, well, I did it. Our self-righteousness say, well, I did do it. But that's not what he wants, Yisrael. Yeah. That doesn't please you. Yeah. We must do it from a pure heart. So because you say, well, I don't want to do it. Well, I did. I still did it. How can you do that for me? I don't want to do that. And find something else to do. It. And then there's some kind of superficial guilt. And you go back and do it. You anger the master when you do that. Look what it says. It says this. It says the knowledge of the rasha, the wicked... Uh, it's not wisdom. But all of your knowledge is about wicked things and wicked events. Uh, that's not wisdom. Uh, you can sit down all day and talk about some of the most trivial, damnable things. Uh, listen to what it says. It says the knowledge of the wicked is not wisdom. Neither. You all better hear me. You know that I'm wicked and you're listening to me. It says neither at any time the counsel of wicked people, sinners, prudent. It's not wise. It's not wise. Anytime you got folks that are wicked, they can't confess their sins and their fault and say, I'm ill, I'm just wicked, I do wrong things. Yeah. And you listen to them and say, they, there's no prudence in what they say. When they tell you, well, just, baby, just go on and do it. I would hear the old folks say that and they knew that they were corrupt. You just do right, baby. I know I do wrong. That's not a witness. And any time you let someone like that tell you something, I would, listen, I would not listen to a dog like that. I'm not going to listen to one like that. Yeah. You don't even have no confidence uh, in the Torah of Yah. Yeah. There's no prudence there. There is no key there. It's not going to open anything but death and hell to you. That's the key of death and hell. It's going to open the door of death to you. It's going to open the door of hell. You won't love Yah. You won't know how to love each other. You won't know how to treat each other. No, we just get real and get the truth right here. It's not worth my nefesh to be insincere and false with you. What am I going to gain? Ten dollars? Stop it. Hundred thousand dollars, what is that? What is one hundred thousand? What is a million dollars? What do you think a million dollars will really do? Well, I'm not going to spend anything. Oh, stop it. I'm going to spend every dime. Isn't that plain what your right says? The knowledge. We need the knowledge of Yah. Of the wicked is not wisdom. That's what knowledge is. When you have wisdom, it produces wisdom, wisdom. 
You know how to entertain. You know how to go in and out before. That's why Shulomo says, just Yah above all things. I don't want houses of land. But give me the wisdom, the knowledge to go in and out before your people and to judge righteously. And then he saw the two whores, Ephraim and Yahuda. And they both said, we got the Torah. I got the law. I got, that's what the baby represents. The one whore rolled over the one and killed the baby and stole the other one. And everybody's trying to steal a right to, to, to y'all show the tree of life. And Shulamo says, I tell you what, I'm give you six and give you six. And the one said, oh, give it to her. Well, you got to take this whole book. You got to take all the mitzvah. Yeah. You can't take this, this salary with four and another six. That's what the religious whole house talks about. And they don't love no one. They don't give a damn about it. We have learned that from this dirty, filthy zana, this prostitute. And we're just as cold and callous as she is. And think ourselves to be something. We're nothing. And that's just the fact. You're trying to belittle us. No, I'm telling you what little your worth is going to be when you go down like all the rest of them out there. It doesn't mean a damn thing. It won't even produce enough hog dung to, you can put in the garden. At least I can go out here and, and dig up some of this cow poop poop and I can put it in me some water in a big old barrel and let it bake for two or three days and I can put it on the garden and I can get something out of it. At least it will fertilize the soil. And that's a fact. So what your self-esteem value it means nothing. The Torah tells us esteem to exalt one another. Lift up others more highly than you. It's amazing that those people that saw us, they lift us up. People at the hotel, so it reciprocate kindness. They say, man, all those watermelons, you got some more of those? I said, I had given them all the way promise. I wish I had taken, it would have been best to take more. We'll see someone on the street and we're so damn stingy, we won't give a dollar. Not every bomb is trying to get wine. I'll give them money. As I said to that one, if you spend that on some whiskey, you see you got one leg, don't you? And I was fitted in shape back then. I said, I'm going to take the other one off. <laughs> you're going to take the other one? What I? I said, I tell you what, buddy. You don't buy what you said you're going to buy. I'm going to take that other leg. I'm coming back to get it. And on the way back home, I wasn't even thinking about that man. Raphael said, look at him. He's coming out of that store right there. Him and his buddy with bags of food. I said, all right. It's all right. We're a nation that shed our compassion among ourselves. I will, my friend. We don't even care about doing for each other. If I got a dollar, my boy got a dollar. That's just the way I am. That's just the way I am. I've always been that way. If I got two dollars, that's all right. Hmm? That's the way I am. That's just the way it is. I'm not tight. I don't want to be like that. I don't want to be tight and stingy. I don't want to be stingy like that, yeah. I don't want to be, I'm not going to be like that. I don't want my heart to be like that. Did you have no compassion that it doesn't take nothing to shut up? I don't want to, I'm not going to do that. I don't do that, you said, I yeah. Never have. I'm not that way. I'm not that way, mama. I'm not posted, I'm not that way. We got five dollars, what do you need? All right. That's all right. But nobody here has money. Well, I had to borrow money from Mark Simeon the other day. I owe him. He just doesn't spend his money like maybe you. On ice cream sandwiches and pies and, and all that. Kool-Aid and all of that. Oh, don't get upset with me. That's all right. I love you enough to let you know that the world is killing you. Destroying your young, beautiful body and your older, beautiful body. Take nothing like some hard work, it helps you. Or getting out there fishing all day and walking that pond and nothing like it. I have a few more verses I want to read to you. As I said to us in Shurat 1919, he talks about the knowledge of the doctrines of Yah, which is the tree of immortality. I want to show you four profound trees that we must eat from. What we began here in Mishli 318. 
and I asked you the question, is the tree of life that he, Yah closed up the garden, is it in the midst of his nation? He put it in the midst, didn't he? Okay, I want to answer that question for you. Can we eat from this great tree? Let me show you here in, first of all, Proverbs, Mishli 3.18. Now we know the first three chapters, or the first six, seven chapters of Mishli talks about one thing. It talks about the chukmah of Yah, wisdom. It says this right here, when it says she, he's talking about the hukuma, the skill of knowledge and understanding of what knowledge produced. Says she is, is does it say she is a tree of life? Yeah. Weaned from every kind of damnable tree, but the tree of life. He made the tree of knowledge. Was that not one of the trees? He set them in the midst of the garden. Garden. He did not set the tree of understanding. He set the tree of knowledge of Tav and Ra. That's what he set, didn't he? And for us to assess that and to understand uh, the power of that, we must understand what the book says. And this is what Shalomo says in Mishli, Proverb 3.18. Uh, it talks about the hukma, the wisdom of Yah. She is a tree of life to them that lay hold on to her. And those that grasp uh, and will not let this knowledge out of their sight, this wisdom. Uh, and you will know that one has grasped unto her because and happy is everyone that's a uh, tomaka. That retains her or grabs her, sees upon her. When a man gets that tree, he's happy. You don't have it, daughters and sons, that's why you're not happy. You have your bitter wickedness and your ill in your heart. Does it say what I just read? It's a simple truth. It's not difficult and complicated. She who wisdom is a tree of life. Same thing that it says in Bereshit. The tree of knowledge. That is the key to understand the power of the tree of life. That's why we got to appreciate Yahshua. That's why we sin continuously without any fault of the reprehensible thing that we do. And when one lay holes on them, when we retain this knowledge, they are happy. You're not happy because you got damn folly and wickedness and sin. You don't even look happy. When a man has the Esha or the Esha, of God, he is rich, his countenance is richer, his walk is richer, his attitude is rich. Same thing, daughters. Yeah. Folks, they know whether we were broke, I didn't have nothing. I said this, okay, now, let me at least take this with me. Well, how do you pay for the hotel? Well, brother sent enough money. I'll tell you how the hotel was paid for. Zachain Tayonia. I know he probably rebuked me, but that's all right. He's going to hear it. He's listening. He sent a $500 offering. And our precious hope, Abiyah, she sent half that much. Abigail. I'm sorry, hope. I hope Abigail sent the other. Then take nothing from what we utilize for the expense here. That's how. Not having to put in back pennies to pay for the gas. That's how. I didn't burden the community. That's the tree of life, wisdom. That is a tree. That's not enough? Okay. Here's another one. Proverbs 15, 4. Look what it says. It talks about a mapi, a healing tongue. Husband, you can never heal your home by your tongue. Wife, you can never heal your man. That's why you don't Paul talk. You don't fling open your mouth and just begin to say things. Don't ever do that. Just don't speak by your emotions or your feelings. Don't do it. The Torah says a wholesome, a mape, a healing tongue is a tree of life. You all hear that? That's what is a tree of life, a healing, a wholesome tongue. A tongue that is full of the healing of Yah, full of the knowledge of Yah, full of the keys of Yah. You got to have a tongue, see. Our tongues are full of wickedness and sinfulness and vileness and corruption. 
But that is a tree of life. When you got a wife that got that kind of tongue, it brrings life to a man. In all of his weakness. That's why he gave man a beautiful thing to help him. And it's the beautiful, wholesome tongue that causes strength to rise up. And he becomes a great man, a man of majesty, and a man of great strength. Come on, daughters, that's why you just don't talk any kind of way. It's your wholesome tongue to teach him how to love you. He's incapable of that unless uh, your shoe is his head. He's an ignorant thing we are. But that's the power of life. Uh, you eat from a wholesome tongue. I can't eat from a tongue uh, that I denigrate my aka and despise my heart. Uh, and I speak that vowel out of me. You can see it in our flesh, uh, in our countenance. We stink. Your tongue is not wholesome. But a wholesome tongue is the tree of life. You can eat from that tongue. You can eat from it all day long. See, that's the tree. This is what's open unto us. A wholesome tongue is the tree of life. But perverseness therein is a breach in the ruach. You find someone that is perverse with their tongue, it makes you mad as hell. It's a breach. It causes a great divide. There's nothing that causes a divide in my home than a tongue or a mouth that is not wholesome. It brings a divide. It brings a separation in bed. No, you might as well get on over here and get tight with me. Get close up on me. Oh, yeah. Mm-mm. I don't like no big guff. That's a great tree of life, a tongue that is so beautiful. But when you got this perverse, vile, rottenness, you open a door to hell, to death, there's a breach, there's a great gulf there. One of the most vital trees that we can eat from, the Ezraq, Proverbs 13, 12. This is what is open unto us by knowledge. We need the key of knowledge. Proverbs 13, 12. It says, Tikva, Ayachal. I know what it says. It used the word hope. But it's talking about the Yachal. It is when one waits, when one tarries, and they know that they can expect what they're waiting for. He says, Tikva or Yachal, defers make the heart sick. But when the desire comes, see, that's why Yah's not going he's not going to let us hope in anything. We will have Tikva because he's going to bring it to pass. When the desire comes, it is a tree of life. And we have Tikva in Yorkshu HaMashiach. We have tikva for tomorrow. We expect, we tarry, and wait for that moment. Then it calls us, that's a tree of life for us. It's a tree of life. This great expectation of y'all. It brings about life. There is a tree. We eat from that tree. You think we're going to go out there and eat from a tree like that? No, this is a tree that we eat from. We eat from the tikva. And it makes our heart fat. We as a nation could spend more time with the wholesome tongue, the healing tongue, and the healing tongue to mape, to speak to each other with beauty. You tell me because mothers speak to their child with harshness, that's not a healing tongue? Sure it is. She put the rod on her backside, and she told you to do it. No, not in my presence, okay? You just don't do it that way. Take him somewhere else. Don't do it around me, okay? Yeah, don't do it around me, okay? All right. How about that? All right. Thank you. We have learned the stupid way of the world. And that's why we have no life in us. We have breaches in our heart. We have breach between brothers and breach between sisters. Such a damnable thing. You can't get across that old wicked breach. You got to confess your fault. You got all against what you tell them. I have nothing. I'm just stupid. I'm nutty. I don't know why I feel this way. We don't have the courage to do that. We don't have the guts to do that. We're cowards. That's what we are. We don't have the guts to do that. I got to breach against this man that's been kind. We struggle together. And I got nothing against him. I don't have the courage to tell him. You're not around me then because this preacher, he tells you the truth. Yeah. Sure does. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You must well love me. Yeah. One more. 
This is one that the keys of knowledge can only open. Thy weed says unto Yah, open up the gates of Sadeh. Look at what Shalomo says in Proverbs 11.30. Proverbs 11.30. It says, the fruit of Sadiq is the tree of life. When you just do right, when you just live right, it produces life. There have been men that live here, I would tell them, you better get it right. You got to do this before you die. Every grave out there where those men are in, I've told them that. I don't care who it is. You got this against this brother, you don't even know how to interact with him, you better get it right. And you all know I've been honest about that. You know that. Uh-huh. I don't care from the latest one to the first one. I've gone that way. Your heart is not right with this one. Get it right, my ark. Make sure you're right. Now get it right in all of my ignorance. You're not going in. We're such cowards. We don't have the strength of courage to confront me. But you will confront someone else, I have found. The fruit of Sadiq is the tree of life, and he that wins Nefesh is wise. When one operates in that open door or that gate of Sadiq, when one operates in that, they win the Nefesh. They win the heart of those that they are with. There is nothing like a friendship when one knows that one has done them wrong. And then they amend that. That one that did the one wrong will guard their ways. And to make sure we don't give a damn about no one. I talk like this up there and uh, up there in Baltimore as well. And I, don't, I didn't take anything back. I said, I'm taking nothing back. Not one word. When I first got there, there were two men said, I'm here because of you. I said, you're not here because of me. You're here because of your shoe. I'm here. As one with his son, he said, I'm here because of you. There was a daughter from Trent. Turn it out. Turn it out. Well, I don't know how to use the rep, but uh, when I found you come here, oh, I must come. What does it take to move there? Tell me. I don't want to live up here. I don't want you living with me, people. You don't want to live with me. I have no problem. You want, you want no problem with me. Not one bit. <laughs> I see you on the street. I just... <clears throat> you don't have to worry about me. I'm not going to do you wrong. That's a fact. Just leave me alone. I just don't tell you all some of the things that happened around you, even folks writing us. I share with the men, and they share with you all. That's all right. I don't care. Hear this in, in my closing, just right here. I want you all to read. You read the whole writings of Yeshai 11, Isaiah chapter 11. And you, these are all the keys to the kingdom. These are all the keys to the kingdom. I will read this quickly here in Yakahan, John, John 14. Yoshua talks to the Samaritan woman, and this is, this is what every tree needs right here. What does a tree need above all things? What do we need? What, all this right here, what I read, these are four trees, right, that I read to her. What is that a tree needs? It needs water, doesn't it? Sure, it needs water. You got you to get, it will, it will get nourishment. As, the least amount of nourishment it gets, it will dig deeper and deeper to get the water on. But this is what Yoshua says to the, uh, the Samaritan woman here in John 14. Yoshua asked and said to her, if you knew the gift of Yah, if we knew what the gift of Yah was, we would not perform in the fashion we do. He said, who is he that say to you, again, he used the word give, doesn't he? No, thank me, so give me drink. You would have asked him, he would have given you the living water. He would have given you the living water. Now, what is the key to this living? The woman had no knowledge of him, did she? She didn't know who she, he was. I want to show you the, the key to all of this and the key to entering into the kingdom. It's found in Chirac 21, 13. I will read. The true key to the living water. You're sure is that living water. It says in Shirak 21 13, uh, the knowledge, the dot, the knowledge uh, of a wise man shall abound like a flood. You need water for the tree to bring forth fruit. 
You need water. So it's the knowledge of a wise man shall abound like a flood. And his counsel is like a pure fountain of living water. He has the power of the key of life because he has the witness of Yahshua. He has eaten from the tree or a tree of life. His tongue is right. His walk is right. That's what the book says. His words are like a fountain. They flow. But it says this, Yisrael, verse 14, the inner parts of a fool, they're like a broken vessel. That's what a fool, they're always broken. And he will hold no knowledge as long as he lives. A fool, a fool will never hold knowledge. A fool, I don't care if they live 500 years old, they don't hold no knowledge. Only a wise man. We need the key, the key to the throne of that weed. And that is one key that the Pharisees have taken. And Yahshua raised up the Ra'ah, the Re'ach, to feed us with knowledge, to feed us with knowledge, to feed us with the key, to open up the gates, to open up the gates of righteousness. So he talks like me. He tells me my sins, and he shows me my sins. So when Zachin ben gets up, he reveals my wickedness, my sin. When Zachin Yaramiya, they reveal. When Zachin Shimri gets up, they reveal my sins and my corruption. And what a man that can't touch me and show me my, my failures uh, and how faulty I am. I don't want to hear no man like that. I don't want to hear that. That's what a righteous man is like. He brings that. He reveals, but a fool is like a broken vessel. They will never hold any wisdom in them at all. I want to close with this to give validity to that verse I began with in Yeshaya. It's found in Yachahan John 14 and 6. When Yahshua spoke unto Toma, Toma, yeah, he says, I am Gerecha, I am the way. He says, I am. Zachain taught us on that recently, didn't he? I am. He says, I am. I am the Torah, and I am, he says, I am the life. No man comes unto the Father but by me. We must come to the knowledge. And it begins with the knowledge of myself, what I am and who I am, what I have, how I have failed, y'all, how corrupt I am. I don't want to ever be cold and hardened, whereby my heart is so hardened that I can't hear what Yah says, and it doesn't change me. I want a wonderful change, an excellent change, a magnificent change to come over me. And that's what Torah does. It changes. Torah changes us. It changes us. We're not the same as we said today. We should not be the same this evening. And the next day, it changes us. It elevates us. It promotes us. We can't walk the same. And that's the fact, Yisrael. You either love me or you hate me. And it makes me no different either way. We need the keys. And as I said, Yeshaya, what I, you will find all seven keys there. I told you all where to go, right? All right, those are the seven keys to the kingdom. You need wisdom. You need understanding. You need the fear of Yah. You need the seven Ruachim. You need the perfect key. You need the perfect authority to open up the knowledge of this book. Without that, you will never understand. You will never change your ways. And daughters, I say to you all, when you have a beautiful ruach, everyone will see that. I don't care whether they're sinners or what. They will see something. And they are supposed to. Hallelujah. As I said, I give them something to look at and ponder. That's what I do. And that's a fact. Hallelujah, hallelujah. With all things we do, Barak you, our Abba, in your sure's name, we Barak you for your sure, for the gathering here in Yerushalayim. We pray for those that are in need, sick in their bodies, and all those that need the healing power. We pray that you bless and strengthen us. Your word will be healing to us all in your sure's name. Guide us this day, Toda, you, Yah, for bread that we will dine on in the dining hall and all of the great substance. We ask it all in your sure's mighty name, and we Barak you. Hallelujah. 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 Ya Barak Yisrael.